Today, we're going to be learning how to engrave anodized aluminum blanks with a desktop laser cutter. For today's project, we will be creating this stylish and durable Wi-Fi QR code that your guests and friends can scan with their phones to automatically connect to your Wi-Fi network. You'll no longer have to deal with reading off long passwords, and this project will make you seem like a magical tech wizard. The process used in this video will work with many styles of laser machines and can be applied to other projects such as making unique metal business cards or engraving aluminum extrusion. I'll be doing my projects on this 3018 CNC with a diode laser module, but any other laser cutter or engraver should work just as well. First, we'll get started by creating the design that will be engraved in our aluminum card. I'll make an image of the QR code by using this Wi-Fi QR code generator. The one I'm using is linked in the description. Just enter the name of your Wi-Fi network in the SSID box, the password in the key box, and hit generate. What you enter has to exactly match your Wi-Fi network, so now would be a good time to scan your code with a phone to make sure it works. With the code working, just hit export to download it. Next, we'll find any other images we want to engrave in the card, such as these Wi-Fi symbols. Once we have them downloaded, we can open up a program called Lightburn and start putting our design together. Even if you've never used Lightburn before or don't want to buy it, you can still do this project because they let you use their software for free for 30 days before needing a license. What you do for the design portion of this video is ultimately up to you. You can copy my design or create something that looks completely different. I'll start by drawing a box that exactly matches the size of my aluminum cards. This way, I know how big I can make things and how they'll look on the card. I'll add this outline to the first layer and turn off the output setting. This allows me to see the box, but the laser won't actually engrave it. Next, I'll drag in the QR code from my downloads folder. I'll add some text below it and place the two images. I put all of these objects on different layers so I can adjust their settings individually. For all of the objects, I set the engraving type to fill, which will allow the laser to scan back and forth in lines to remove the entire area of the design. To figure out what power and speed settings I should use, I did some research on the internet. I found that because I have a laser diode with a power of 5 watts, it's suggested that I use it at 100% power and at a speed slower than 100 millimeters per second. However, after conducting some speed tests using this card, I found that the speed made no difference even if I scanned at a speed of even 200 or 300 millimeters per second. This makes me suspicious that my anodized aluminum cards are painted or coated with something rather than actually anodized. If anyone knows how to tell if these cards are actually anodized, please let me know in the comments. In any case, I set the scan rate of the QR code and images to 300 millimeters per second and the text to 200 millimeters per second. However, you might want to run a test like this one on your own machine to determine the ideal power and speed settings for your cards, but these values worked for me. I also double-clicked on each layer and turned on the constant power mode, which will keep the laser at 100% power while engraving. After connecting and setting up my machine, I'm almost ready to start engraving. To make lining things up easier, I clamped a piece of wood to the spoil board and burned these lines into it. To do this, I enabled the laser fire button in the machine settings menu. This allows me to fire the laser manually from the Move tab. First, I fired the laser with a power of something like 2%, and this allowed me to focus the laser using a piece of paper by adjusting the lens to get the smallest dot size. Then, I turned up the laser power and fired it while manually moving the X and Y axes to draw the lines into the piece of wood. This ensures that the lines we just drew, and therefore the card that we're going to put up against them, will be lined up exactly with the X and Y directions on the machine. To attach the card to the spoil board, I just used some scotch tape and aligned the edges of the card with the lines we just burned. I again set the laser power to 2% and moved the laser to the spot where the lines intersected. All that's left to do is select Start from Current Position and hit the Start button. Wait, wait, wait! This should go without saying, but always wear good laser safety glasses whenever your laser is so much as plugged in. Even if you don't intend to fire the laser, accidents can happen. I also wouldn't trust the pair of laser safety glasses that come with your machine. Instead, I have a pair from Survival Lasers that's rated to this laser's wavelength and power. Okay, now we can hit start. Now that our card is done, we can take it off the build plate and brush away the residue. This makes the surface of the metal much more shiny.
With a diode laser like this one, we normally can't engrave aluminum because the shiny surface just bounces the laser off like a mirror. However, when the aluminum is coated with something, the coating can absorb the laser's energy and vaporize it. That's how we're able to engrave anodized or coated aluminum. We're not actually engraving the aluminum, we're just blasting away the coating wherever the laser hits. I used the same process to engrave a simple metal business card for carbon coil. Here's the design I came up with. I used the text tool to make all the text at different sizes, and I also added this YouTube logo in image mode. This design took about half an hour to engrave. I think with some tweaking of the design, I could get the laser to make these cards even faster. Additionally, if I wanted to make a lot of these cards more efficiently, I could tile multiple cards on the spoil board. That way, I would only have to hit run once, and then I would come back in a few hours and they would all be finished. Once I tiled all the cards, I converted the entire 2x2 grid to a bitmap so that the laser could scan back and forth across the entire set of cards at once instead of doing each card one at a time. The four from this round of engraving turned out a little less shiny than my first attempt, but I'm not sure why. In any case, now I have a set of five business cards. If I wanted to, I could even fit up to nine cards on my laser machine at once. However, we won't be doing that today. And that's about it for this project. Once you get the power and speed settings dialed in, engraving anodized aluminum is pretty much like any other laser cutter project. Armed with the knowledge from this tutorial, I'd love to hear what you're planning on making in the comments down below. Thank you for watching, and as always, I'll catch you in the next video.